percent at least. And I said, well, for I said, we're going to work towards fifty percent. Why don't we just work for a hundred percent? What does it matter, you know? So uh, if, if a remote viewer in a real serious intelligence situation produces only ten percent data, where a trained one can provide eighty-five percent data. Uh, that, that's where the money's going to go to, and it turned out that's where the money came to humble me. <coughs> did, you, did you, do you see what I mean? I sort of do, but I, I guess what I wanted to understand is, when you use the word we, I get this image of you and other remote viewers providing your feedback on what you're calling, uh, you know, a usable data. And so... That oh, let me answer, let me, let me say it this way. We, the training targets, of course, everybody knew about, and um, they didn't know what, which one was being used as the training target. But um, myself and a three or four, and two skilled natural remote viewers, and myself, and um, well, I forget what, uh, did oper what we call what was called operational sites, okay, and they were secret or top secret or above. We never had any feedback, except if more money came. Mm -hmm. You see, if these hadn't been useful, the guys, the users of the information said, well, deep six them, give them cement boots, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, sir? Um, what would you say to someone looking to begin training? You were just talking about training. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, a group, this was a group, group remote viewing, I think there were nine people all together, and uh, each one worked independently and alone, and then we, you know, compiled the data and everything, and uh, um, everybody found buildings, everybody found plants, and a few found lights, artificial lights, uh, and water. Now water and plants and buildings are, are almost certainly confirmed today. That remains the light thing, the lights, you know, standing on top of big poles. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is, this is again by coordinates, so... I, huh? Well, we just... Mars. 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 Um, we didn't use coordinates in that time because um, the coordinate system in Mars is not hemispherical. It starts at zero point west and goes around 360 degrees. And we thought that would be confusing, so we just said Mars, and that's people found all these things. Now, when this was done, I think it was in like 1977, and uh, there was no way to have feedback on it. But we found, they found water, plants, and buildings, okay? And the existence of those on Mars is pretty well confirmed now today, as, uh, as uh, Dr. Van Flandern said in his lecture yesterday. Can you, as best of your ability, uh, try to uh, give us your impressions on just what remote viewing entails? In other words, if you're Sweetheart, over a, certain like a lot of work. <laughs> and now, no, like, like, you know, we're just seeing a scene where it's raining. Are you feeling the rain? You if, feeling if you're good, yes. Yeah. So can you give us an example of like, one of your remote viewings in the past and, and sensations? That, how do you perceive them? Or are you in a trance? Are you there's no this? trance. There's no trance? No. Uh, are you seeing uh, images or are you visually? Are you actually there? Uh, are these impressions you're receiving in your brain? Or how well, all of that, but in a different arrangement. In training remote viewing, the, the trainee sits at a desk, upright, pen and pencils in front of him, lights coming down. The monitor sits at the other end with the same tape recordings, videotapes if they want, and things like that. The trainee gets a coordinate, and which he doesn't know from Adam, you know. And he starts by getting the autonomic system is sort of automatic writing gives him this squiggle, as the critics like to say, it's just a bunch of squiggles. But the squiggle is loaded with information in its own language. And then, if the viewer accepts that, 
and then begins what we call a download of stage twos. And this would be what the body would feel if the body was at that location. And uh, so we call them tactiles. Um, uh, we've been able, through the years, we enumerated 79 of them, of which visualization is only one. So the majority of the data coming in is coming in without engaging the visual apparatus of the neocortex. It's by feeling. And uh, uh, sometimes the viewer can identify the site just by the stage twos, the listing of the stage twos. And one of the nice training sites was the Old Faithful Geyser in, in uh, Yellowstone Park, you know. And this is all stage twos, you know, so he gets the coordinate and he says, oh, the sun coming up. And then starts the stage two, where there's smells and there's lots of colors and there's liquid. And then there's this, and over here's a wooden fence, and uh, then, then there's more smells and, and everything. And the guy says, I don't know what this is. And, um, but if, if, you know, El Old Faithful erupts about every 25 minutes, I think. So if we draw this out for 25 minutes, you can say, be sure that Old Faithful is going to go up. And then he says, oh my God, there's water coming up. It looks like Old Faithful to me. Yeah.